Last time, we began refactoring our WPF application into a vertical slice architecture. So rather than organizing our application by file type, such as views, vmodels, services, etc., we've refactored into these cohesive feature slices that contain everything related to a specific feature. Now, in this initial refactor to a vertical slice architecture that we did last time, we ran into issues where features were referencing other features. And I wasn't a big fan of this because I want each feature to be self-contained and not dependent on other features. So this time, we're gonna address that concern and continue refactoring our vertical slice architecture application so that features don't reference other features. So checking out where we left off last time, we have our features folder that contains authentication features and secret message features. Of course, that's the domain that we're dealing with, just viewing a secret message for the authenticated user, which we fetch from our backend API. But this specific view secret message feature references our authentication feature. So we can see that in the home view model, we reference the authentication store, which of course lives in our authentication feature in order to display the user's username at the top of the home view. And we can see that in our application. Let's run this real quick. And as we can see, we say, hello, username. Our username is single to Sean. And this is on our home view. So again, our home view, which lives in the view secret message feature is referencing our authentication store, which lives in the authentication feature. So really the only way to get rid of this feature to feature dependency is to introduce and enforce another layer that's either above our features layer or below our features layer. And I think later on in the series, we're gonna introduce a layer that goes underneath our features layer, which means multiple features could reference whatever that underlying layer is. But to address the feature dependencies that we have now, we're gonna introduce a layer above our features layer, and this is gonna be called pages. So let's add a new folder to our application that's gonna contain pages. And this pages layer, its responsibility of course is to represent a page, but more importantly, it's going to aggregate multiple features together in order to form the experience for a specific page. So the page we're having an issue with in terms of dependencies is this home page. So of course the home view model references our authentication feature, but it also does a lot regarding the view secret message feature, which is why we put it inside of this folder in the first place. So overall, this home page is aggregating multiple features together. And of course, it is a page, it is a full page experience. So we're gonna move it over to the pages folder. Let's put it in its own folder. We'll call this home, since this is the home page. And we're gonna move over the home view and the home view model. So let's drop that into this home directory. And now this view and view model live in our pages layer, which aggregates multiple features together. And I named this pages instead of something like views, because as we can see, this contains more than just a view. It also contains the backing view model. And this goes back to the fact that we want to be more cohesive. We want to put things that are relevant to each other near each other. So of course the view gets data from the view model. So we have those sitting next to each other. So this simple change has entirely solved our issue of feature to feature dependencies. But now we have a new issue. So if we go to this load secret message command, it depends on the home view model and it needs the home view model in order to set the secret message on the home view model, which we display in the UI. So now we have our feature, the view secret message feature, depending on our home page. And really I want these dependencies going in one direction between these two layers. I only want pages to depend on features and aggregate them together. I definitely don't want features to depend on pages. So there's a couple ways that we could work around this. One, we could simply use an interface that we define in our view secret message feature and that gets implemented in our home page. So let's see how that would look. So for example, we could define an interface, maybe something like an I view secret message view model. And this view model interface that lives in our view secret message feature can be used instead of referencing the home view model. So let's use that in our load secret message command, which also lives in our view secret message feature. Let's import this 
and might as well rename it view secret message view model update this constructor as well there we go and all we're using this view model to do is to set the secret message that we've loaded so on this interface we can define a secret message property let's define that on our view model so this has completely solved our issue so our load secret message command is no longer depending on our home page but over at the home view model we can no longer instantiate this load secret message command because the home view model isn't an i view secret message view model but it has everything required in order to be so we just need to implement that interface so we need to implement the i view secret message view model interface import that from our feature so this is good our page is depending on our features which is the direction of dependencies that we want and we already implement this interface because we have this secret message property that we were using before so this solves our dependency issue and we can test this out let's give it a shot and here we go we load our secret message so defining this i view secret message view model interface was a simple and efficient way to invert the dependency so that our feature didn't depend on our page but there's another approach that we could take that might be more appropriate for other situations. So let's try out a different feature. Let's try out this login feature. So this feature doesn't really have any issues. Everything related to logging in lives within this feature slice, doesn't have dependencies on really any other feature. But let's move this to our pages layer because really this pages layer should contain all of the full pages in our application, such as the login page, the register page, the reset password page, and the view profile page as well. But let's focus on this login page. Let's add a new folder in our pages folder. We'll call this login. And we're gonna move over our login view and login view model. So let's drop those in the login folder. Let me close everything and just focus on this view and view model. And now we have the same issue as before. So if we look at our login command, this depends on the login view model, which now lives in our pages layer. So we could definitely do the same thing as before, where we just define an I login view model interface within our login feature, and then our login command could reference that, and our login view model in the pages layer could implement that interface, basically same thing that we did for the home view model. But with that approach for this feature, our feature would be so small, and our page would be so big. When in reality, a lot of the logic within this login page could be pushed down into the login feature, and then everything related to our login feature would be much more cohesive and consolidated in one spot and could change together, which is really the main goal of our vertical slice architecture in the first place. So we're gonna try and keep this pages layer thin and move as much as we can into our login feature. So that being said, let's move the entire login form into our login feature. So in the login feature, let's add a view, and this is gonna be the login form view. So this view is just gonna contain the login form. So it's gonna contain this entire grid that contains the email input, the password input, the submit button, and the navigate register button. So let's just copy that and move it into the login form view, which again is in our login feature. Let's import bindable password box there we go so this looks good let's remove the grid row and the margin we're going to let the parent page define those values so now moving up to the login view let's get rid of everything within this grid so all of the login form fields and buttons let's remove those and inside here we're going to have our login form view which lives in our login feature so we're going to have to import that from the login feature. There we go, imported our login namespace. And as we can see, our pages layer is already much thinner. So we've already pushed a lot into our cohesive login feature. But this login form view that lives in our login feature now, it's gonna need a view model that it can bind to. So inside of our login feature, let's add our view model in here. So the login form view model let's inherit from view model base as all of our view models should and this will just contain pretty much everything in the login view model actually so let's just copy all of this everything from the login view model 
and drop it in the login form view model. And let's import everything that we need. Rename our constructor. This is the login form view model class. Finish importing all of this stuff. And now, as we can see, we can instantiate the login command because it wants a login view model passed to it. And we're trying to pass in the login form view model. So let's update our login command to instead depend on the login form view model, which now has everything that the login view model had before. Let's import this. And now, ta-da, our login command, which lives in the login feature, no longer depends on our login page, which lives a layer above in the pages layer. So we've removed that backwards dependency, features to pages, by moving more of the login behavior into the login feature slice. So let's do the finishing touches here. Let's move up to our login view model and finish up with this. So instead of all these properties, which now live on the login form view model, we're just gonna depend on a login form view model. So let's import that from our features layer. So this is a good dependency because we're in our pages layer now. And we can make this view model property read only. And we're just gonna initialize it in the constructor. So let's initialize our login form view model and pass in everything that the login view model receives in the constructor. So there we go. That looks good. And this should almost work, except now in our login view. So this is the page. If we want the login form view to be able to bind to the login form view model, then we're going to have to set the data context of this user control to point to the login form view model property on our login view model. So this should allow the bindings to work between the login form view and the login form view model. So let's try this out. We have our thin login page, which puts together and has a one-way reference to our login feature. So let's run this and we'll have to log out and go to the login page. Make sure that looks good. So let's log out. There we go, looks good. No binding errors. These links work. That's good, let's try logging in now. So submit, success, and there we go on the home view. So extracting this login page and login form component that lives in the login feature worked well for the login feature overall, and I think would also be a good approach for some of these other authentication features as well, such as the register feature, probably the reset password feature, and the view profile feature as well. I'm gonna extract these into the pages layer and then the pages layer will be fully made up of all of the full screen pages in our application. So I'm gonna do that real quick and I'm gonna do this off camera because it's gonna be very similar to the approach we did for the login feature, but we'll also review it real quick once I'm done. All right, finished up with refactoring into our pages layer. So just to summarize, similar to the login feature for the register feature, we have our register form view and view model, which just contains everything related to the form. And then our register command can reference that view model. So everything lives within the same feature, no strange dependencies. And then we also have our register page up here, which just references the register form view in our register feature. And then do the same thing for the reset password feature. We have the form view, form view model, and command that references the form view model. And then our entire page as well, which references the form view model in our feature. And lastly, did the same thing for the view profile feature. Break this down into a profile details view, which just contains the grid of profile details, as well as the backing view model. And then our page just references that profile details view and view model. So let's test this out real quick. So land on the login page which is made up of our login feature, the register page made up of our register feature, the password reset page made up of our password reset feature. Let's log in. There we go. And here we have our home page, which is made up of some authentication features as well as the view secret message feature. And then our profile page made up of the view profile feature. So we've knocked out our most critical feature to feature dependencies by implementing this pages layer. But with the introduction of this pages layer, are we less cohesive? Are we slowly losing the benefits of vertical slice architecture? Because for example, let's look at everything related to logging in. 
So we have this login page that lives all the way down here, and then our login feature that lives all the way over here in a completely different module. But I would argue that we really aren't that much less cohesive. If we look at this login page, it's not really doing anything related to our login behavior because that still all lives within the login form view model, which lives within our login feature slice. So everything related to logging in still lives within our feature slice and is very cohesive in my opinion. And really all this pages layer is doing is putting features together and representing the full pages in our application. And I would say this pages directory provides a great experience for a developer who wants to get familiar with the code base. So for example, if a new developer is in this code base and they really aren't that familiar with it and they have a bug related to the homepage, then our folder structure and this pages layer would be a good entry point for that developer to figure out where to start to track down that issue. They would easily be able to come over here to the pages layer into the homepage module and then dig deeper into features if needed. Some other things that I wanted to clarify. So for this view seeker message feature, in order to fix our dependency from feature to page that we saw before, instead of creating a view and view model like we did for the login feature and the register feature, etc., we instead created this I view seeker message view model that lives within our feature. And then we implement this interface in the pages layer. So you might be wondering why didn't I create a view and a view model like I did to fix the dependency issue in these other features? Because for example, in this view secret message feature, we could have had some kind of secret message view and secret message view model that held the secret message instead of defining this interface. But the reason I didn't do that is because the secret message view would have just been made up of the text block that displays the secret message from the view model. So since it was so simple and really didn't have a specific UI, I decided that we would just delegate the display of the secret message to the page because it's pretty straightforward, nothing crazy. So I went with this interface approach instead. So whether you use an interface to invert the dependency or you move as much feature logic into the feature slice as possible, I would say either approach is fine, Really, the main goal is for pages to depend on features, not the other way around, and for as much feature logic as possible to live within the feature slice. So just to summarize what we did, we removed our feature to feature dependencies by creating a page layer, which represents full pages in our application and aggregates features together. And then we fixed issues with our features referencing the pages layer by leveraging interfaces to invert dependencies, and by moving as much feature logic as possible into each individual feature slice, instead of being in the pages layer, which we really want to be thin and only responsible for aggregating features together. So hopefully you can apply these concepts to your own application to implement vertical slice architecture. And stay tuned for more. There's still some other quirks and cases that I wanna cover regarding vertical slice architecture within this application that I'm pretty excited for. Aside from that, if you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave those below in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video or are enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.